Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Sing another song for my praise team.
Thank you. Know, we're going to go to the throne of God with this prayer. Yes. So we're going to speak for to God for the Oh, yes. Yeah. And let God be the healer this morning. Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, God. Father, let your will be done on earth, God, as it is in heaven. Father, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debt, Lord, as we forgive our debtors. Lord, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us, God. God. Now, in your kingdom, how are you going? God, we say thank you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. You woke us up early this morning, God. Yet in our right mind, God, and we say thank you, Jesus. Thank you for bringing us in our house. One more time, God. We say thank you, God. Thank you how you have shield us, God. How you have blessed us, God. How you have helped us, God. We say thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, look down on this congregation this morning. God, I should have touched them right now, God. Whatever they said in the need of God, God, work it out for them. 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 Look down right now, God. I'm so excited for one thing, God. So excited for another one. God, you know God. You know everything, God. God, don't forget the man and the woman of this house, God. Thank you for blessing them right now, God. I should have touched them, God. From the crown of their head, God, down to the toes of the feet, God. Don't forget each member, God. God, you know, God. You know, God. The sick, the shedding, God. The fever-minded, God. The prison, God. The dead, God. Touch our children, God. God, you know the teacher. I love my God. Set them home, God. Let them know you made them. Yes. And you know all about them, God. Yes, and God, we are standing in the knees. Yes. And I see you telling you one more time. Thank you, God. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Bless us and keep us in the deep trials that I gave it unto you, God. We say amen. 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 Praise God. Continue to stand to your feet. All who don't have the scripture for the day, we're going back to the response we're reading, which is coming out of 1 Corinthians in the 10th chapter, the 1 to the 13th verse. I'll be the leader, and the congregation will do the next. Right now, more of a brother, I would that ye should not be ignorant. All our father was under the clouds, and they all passed through the sea. And they all did eat the same spiritual meat. But many of them God was not pleased when they were overthrown in the wilderness. Neither that idol let it be, neither ye idol let it were some of them. And it is written that the people sit down to eat and drink and rolls up the plate. Neither let us make fornication, and some of them make, and some of them make bread with the cows. Neither tempt Christ, as all, some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Neither are we, and some of them also mocked, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all of these things happened unto them for abomination, from whom the end of the world may come. Take heed as you fall. There is no temptation of the common to make. But God is faithful. He will not suffer you to be accepted above that you are able. But the temptation also make a way to escape that you should be able to bear. Praise God. We thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you need to give him all the praise. And 
She yeah. said, loosen it up here. Yeah. You gotta loosen it up. Son, see, you gotta shake yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Let it go. Let yeah. go yeah. in the building. Because when you come in the building, it changes the atmosphere. Yeah. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
Give the Lord another praise. Hallelujah. Do you have another one? Yes, Lord. Almighty. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated in the presence. Amen of the Lord. Amen. Sisters and brothers. Amen. I'm I'm so grateful. Grateful. Uh, that the Lord has blessed me. Uh, I guess I've been going for about three weeks. And, and I don't know. I got up in Georgia. And I got so my breathing capacity. It looked like it got so bad. You know, I had to get out the bed and sit up in the recliner. But good God Almighty. Oh, Jesus. I got back in yesterday evening, and I've been having this problem, I guess, every night about 2 o'clock. And I've been having this problem from day to day, and when they come, I do all right. Glory to God. But I got back last night, or yesterday evening, and I laid down, I took me a nap, amen. I got up, and then I went back to bed. And I ain't had that breathing problem since. Glory to God. I, I told my wife, I said, baby, I said, I'm taking note of something. Amen. Uh, you know, since I got back home, and you just get that attack about two or three o'clock in the morning. My. Amen. Mm -hmm. And y'all, and I got there and I just sleep like a baby. Right. 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 Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 The songs I have so much yeah. to thank my Jesus for. Yeah. Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. Right. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. And when I think of the goodness of Jesus, when I think of all that the Lord done for me, my soul, glory to God, amen. I really don't need no help on this one, but my soul, hallelujah, it cried out, hallelujah, glory to God, amen, amen. And it really encouraged me, amen, to finish what God had given me to do. Glory to God. Amen. I'm not here to please you. I'm not here to please myself. Amen. I'm not here to please them children of mine. But I'm here to please the Lord. Thank God today. Amen. And so here I am. I'm back. Thank God, determined to get the job done. Glory to God, amen. I heard the Lord say, don't be weary. Be welcome. In due season. The Lord said, you faith, you, you reap if you don't pay. Thank God today, amen. Hallelujah. Sisters and brothers, I stand ready to preach. Amen. But this boy done come all the way from Jacksonville. Amen. You know, sometimes common sense tell you something. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Stand ready. I got a word. Amen. But the word that I got won't spoil. Amen. And and, and y'all before before I I, I I I turned this young horse loose. Amen. All I need to do, I need to whip today. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That means that I mean for him to preach. Thank God oh my Hallelujah. That's all right. Amen. And so y'all, uh, uh, before we turn him loose, amen, I'd like to give honor to, amen, all of the ministers, the service conductors, amen. I think I see Ella Hilton. His wife, thank God for you today. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah. Isn't it wonderful? Thank God. Amen. And you know, Jesus said, He come to seek and to save. 
that which you lost. Thank God. And y'all, while I was away, I done a lot of meditating. And thank you. His other job as the peoples of God yes. is to save people. Yes, but y'all, sometimes we let our own difficulties yes. cause a conflict to get between us and what God told us to do. So I come back to encourage you, put them difficulties behind you. I don't care what a brother or sister done or done to you or done to themselves. Y'all, if there's a way to help them to get their life back on track, this is our job. Glory to God. God didn't send us to be judges, y'all. He said, if your, if your brother would hear you, you would save yourself and them that hate you. Glory to God, amen. So I come back with a different aspect of life. Thank God Almighty, amen. So uh, I don't want you to come and load me up with all this garbage because I'm not a garbage collector. Glory to God, amen. If you can't say nothing good about your brother or sister, I don't care, he might have is guilty of what you're saying. Glory to God. But our job is to get him to Jesus. If I can get him to repent. If I can get him to surrender. Not to me. To the will of God. Then we can move on with our lives. Thank God. Paul talked like uh, when he was among the weak, he become weak. That he might gain. Thank God Almighty. Hallelujah. And y'all sometimes because, you know, the first thing hits out of our mind, you know better. You shouldn't have done that or you shouldn't have done the other. But you don't, if you flip the page, you've done some of the same thing. Now, did you know better? <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So, sister, I, I, I'm thanking I'm on my way home to meet the soon coming king. And y'all, I ain't intend for none of these attachments to hang on to me because I'm cutting them loose. Amen. That means that if you've done wrong, God will forgive you. Amen. Is it right? Peter had a problem with that. How often my brother sin against me and I forgive him. How often? He said, seven times? Yo, according to the Jewish tradition, three times was the limit. And Peter pushed it to seven. And Jesus said, not to seven times, but 70 times seven. Yo, if I have to forgive you 490 times, I'm crucified by then. Yo, the door is off to hit you. Thank God Almighty. Amen. So what did you say? Keep forgiveness in your heart. Because just like your, the devil, amen, causing your brother or sister to commit a crime, that devil ain't going no way. That devil looking at you too. So today, my sister and brother, I'm encouraged. Thank God to get a job done. Amen. Jesus said, I come to seek and to save that which you love us. Did you see any lost sisters and brothers since you've been in the church? The book said, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. So what do we got to do? If Jesus is looking for the Lord, what do I mean you? Glory to God, oh my son, but pastor, you don't know how bad they done. Amen. I don't know how bad you done. But the Lord save us. And I'm out here to follow the pattern that Jesus left me to church. I'm looking for the Lord. I'm looking for that brother that needs forgiveness. Amen. I'm going to let you know you can make it. It ain't never been that so bad that the Lord throwed you away. And if God ain't throw you away, I ain't either. 
Is that all right? Thank God. Today, today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I had to get that off my chest because, you know, he was free. Amen. Thank God. He caused you to die. Thank God Almighty. But now we can get ready for the word of God today. Amen. I come. Amen. Prepare to preach. Amen. But when I came, before I got to town, I heard, amen, that this street preacher, amen, <laughs> see, he was in town up there on the street. And, and I came through the street and I saw him. Amen. Thank God. And you know what I done? Put my Bible back. Amen. I said, I'll wait the next time. Amen. Thank God. Not only him, y'all, but if God give you a message, amen, to deliver to this church, I want you to deliver that message. Did you call what I say? If God give you one. Yes. Amen. I don't want you up there trying to mess with folks because you done saw something. I'm trying to tell you the day we all have sinned and come shout of the glory of God. Amen. So today, if you would pray, yeah. amen, with that minister today, says he got wild up there on the street. I want him to unwind in this church. Right. Is that all right? Amen. amen. Just know that I'm behind you and I'm popping the whip. Preach, boy, preach. Thank God. Is that all right? Amen. amen. Tell us what God said. Yeah. Amen. And everything will be all right. Amen. Uh, uh, if somebody, somebody help me sing just a little bit of this one. Amen. And, and, uh, and then the next principal voice, amen, to be our own, uh, Ella Michael Stevenson. Thank God Almighty. Hallelujah. Amen. I want him to go at it like, amen, the building is on fire. Is that all right? Amen. Yo, I come to have a good time. What am I doing? Amen. Thank God. I all that God done brought me through. Amen. Y'all, I made it. I made it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The devil might have thought he was going to kill me, but I made it. Thank God. Hallelujah. Through your pain and through. Oh, my God. Y'all, you might not even understand, but, but when your breaths are being cut off, God Almighty. You don't know that you could be able to exhale again. And God brought me all the way through. Oh, oh glory to God, man. I got something to thank God for today. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Help me because I need the Lord. I, I need the yeah, yeah. Ah. I need it. Oh, bless me, my Savior. I today and give you praise this morning for your presence and your spirit there with us. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your guidance. We thank you for all 
that you have already completed in our lives. So Lord, we come together on one accord in one place with one mind and one spirit asking you, Lord, have your way among us as your people. God bless this word, bless the service, bless our leader, bless our ministers, those that came out to be a part of this. Oh God, we ask for the authority of heaven in this hour, in this church. God, don't let it be the same today. Let not today be the same. But whatever, who have came for whatever purpose they may have came for, we ask you today, Lord, touch them and do not allow them to be denied today, God. Lord, we're not just here to have church. We're here to worship you in spirit and in truth. Give us this grace. Give us your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. And we say together as a church, amen, amen. amen. Come on, somebody give God a praise, just a quick praise. Hallelujah. 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 If the Lord has done anything for you and you have something to tell him thank you for, then you can say it out of your own mouth. I don't even have to tell you. You don't even have to get a command from me. The Bible says, everything that has prayer, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Good times, bad times, weak times, strong times, corona times, non-corona. I will bless the Lord at all times. And there is a time and season for everything under the sun. And this time is for worship. This time is for praise. This time is to lift up our holy and true risen Christ. The Lord of Lords. The King of Kings. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. We give you praise. When we recognize the purpose of why we come to church is to lift up the name of God is that there's no one here that we came for. We came to worship the Lord as a corporate body. As a corporate body. And if that's you, I just want you to give him the true worship that's in your heart. Everybody may can't do this, but for those that truly have something in their heart, you heard what Pastor said. You don't know what it feels like when your breath is cut off. But God brought him through. And we say thank you. Hallelujah. You may be seated if you can. We give honor to our pastor, Pastor Ella James Stevenson, our elders, our ministers, and our deacons, mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers in the house of God. We give praise to you and we thank God for his presence with us today. If we can go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 12 through 22. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 12 through 22. So oftentimes we live our life and we condition our life for what we have right now. And we are exposed to people that have this sense of instant gratification. That if I don't have it now, if I don't get it now, then what's the use? I need it when I need it. I want it when I want it. And that's a terrible position to be in because the world doesn't always go by the beat of your drum. And sometimes your best efforts can never always result to a completed factor. Sometimes you can give all you can, do all you can, and still it don't make out. Right. And if we live in a life that's always constantly changing. One would suggest then, what is stable? What is consistent? What can we trust? Who can we trust? Right. In the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 12 
through 22, Paul offers a deeper sense of security. Paul doesn't offer a grit of security that only is connected to physical hands. Uh, Mother Faith, Paul doesn't offer a, 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 a sense of stability that's limited to what we have. Paul goes deeper and he goes so deep to he taps into the eternality of God. He talks about it from the standpoint that he uses it so that we can look through it while we live currently right now. In 2 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 12, watch what it reads. Now Christ is preached that he has not been risen from the dead. How do some say among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. Yes, if we, yes, and we are found false witnesses of God, we uh, we have testified of God that he that he raised up Christ whom he did not raise up. Mama. If in fact that the dead is not raised for if he for if the dead do not rise then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen your faith is futile. Mama. You are still in your sins. Uh -huh. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only, if this is your conclusion of all of this, Mother Hicks, he said, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men's most pitiful, and King James, miserable. But now, let's, let's get rid of this idea that he isn't risen. Verses 20 gives us the truth. Look at somebody and say verse 20 gives us the truth. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruit of those who have been fallen asleep. And for since by man came death, by men also come the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. All shall be made alive. Alive. If I was to give a simple subject today, I want us title is your best life. Right. Your best life. Best life. Your best life. Mama. I hear that a lot and I see it a lot on Facebook and I hear it all the time in company. I want to live my best life. I want to live my best life. Y'all going to help me preach or y'all going to look at this. I want to live my best and so in hearing that, I wonder, uh, my cousin Paul, that what, is they, what do they mean that they want to live their best life? And, and, and Carl, I found out that that's not always everybody's forte. Your best life may not be my best life. The way you may want to live may not be the way I want to live. So everybody's best life is only subject to their own personal desires of what they want their life to be. And not only that, but if they put themselves in a position to live, quote, their best life, then what they're saying is that they're paying the cost and the price to be the boss to live that life. Right, right. That they will, watch this, underwrite every expense, whatever I got to go through, whatever I got to pay, whatever my body got to endure, I'm going to do it because I want to live my best life. Thank you, God. Because the best life is the good life, right? Because the best life, you don't got to worry about problems, and you got to worry about sickness, and you got to worry about issues, and you got to worry about stuff, and you got to worry about people aggravating you, the wrong text, or the wrong Facebook message, or the wrong word, or the wrong criticism. You just free and at ease from all of that. Because nothing is really happening because it's my best life. But if in your life, if in your best life, if it only stops here, then my friend, you are not living your best life. Can I talk to somebody and tell you that the best life is the second life? The best life is the second life. The first life is the life of sin. The second life is the life of incorruptibleness. Eternal. A, a, a place, a position, a sphere 
that will never render wickedness, evil, violence. Only for the reason of the resurrection of Jesus. I can't have this unless Jesus rose from the dead. I won't have eternal life. I won't have salvation. I won't have saved. I won't have a way out. I won't have any hope. I will die in my misery. I will die in my darkness. But Christ is risen. Oftentimes, uh, there's always argument about religion, Mother Lily. They, they argue about religion all the time. And, and you can never trust the world's idea about God because they worship multiple gods. They, they, if I was to bring the Apostle John here, the Apostle John would say, love not the world nor the things in the world. For if, if you love the world, the love of God is not in you because he said the lust of the eye, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh are in the world and they're not of the Father. Now would paint a picture of what the world looks like. They got lust, they got pride, right. they got the flesh, yeah. they got the eyes, yeah. which means that the world has a whole lot of sensation, right. have a whole lot of influence. Right. Yeah. One of the text writers said, live or not for the meat on the earth, yeah. where moth, where thieves, where rust, all these things, watch this, contaminate. Okay. Rather, John 6, don't follow Jesus for the miracles and the meat, but follow him because he is the bread of life. But we've been so conditioned in this world to live a life that seems to be so comfortable and suited for us. My Lord. To where it gets people so comfortable to where they don't even look to go to hell. I want my millions now. I want my stuff now. In the text, Paul wants to give us an understanding that if you get so caught up down here and you get so wrapped up in this world down here, you will not get the joy and the satisfaction in your spirit of being able to look for the risen, glorified Savior. My Lord. And so John, so uh, I'm sorry, Paul quote, paints the argument here to let these people know Christ is risen. If I was to give you a one point, my first point would be look at the, 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 the disputation, look at the claims, look at the disputation of the letter, verses 12. Verse 12 says, Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead. How do some say, watch this, that there is no resurrection of the dead? If Christ be preached that he is raised from the dead, Mama. How are you saying that he is risen? That he has not been raised from the dead? Why are you saying this? Where did you get this from? Look at your neighbor and say, where did they get this from? Matthew 28 and 8 will tell you this ideology came as a result of being sold out. That this whole argument came from people of uh, Elder Hilton that was half-baked. They never wanted the truth to come out anyway, so they was, they was paid off to generate a false message that Christ's body was stolen. And, and, and they were so greedy that they was able to be bribed with money to lie and carry the lie even until the this day. Some people don't even believe this day Christ is risen from the dead. But let me expel that lie by showing you Matthew 28 and 9. And, and watch what he said. And as they went, his disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, Rejoice. So they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren and go to Galilee and there they will see me. Now while they were going, behold, some of the guards came into the city and reported to the chief priests all things that had happened. 
And when they had assembled with the elders and consulted together, they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers, saying, Tell them his disciples came at night and stole him away while he was sleeping. And if this comes to the governor's ears, we will appeal and uh, please him and make you secure. We're going to back up your life. So they took the money. They took the money. Isn't it funny? The love of money is the what? Root of all evil. This money makes you sell out for Christ. Sell Christ out to lie. Now watch this. It's not benefiting them. Because if Christ is risen, they can be saved if they're Christians. <laughs> watch this. Jesus said he came to save the lost. If they were small, they would have not took the money. But render their hearts and knock the down and they got on their face and say, Lord, they want me to sell you out. But obviously, you are the Son of God. Because nobody has this power to stand face to face with death, hell, and the grave and say, Give me that. But no, they're so loud. And so that's where this reputation, this disputation, this claim, this argument that he ain't risen. Uh uh, he is not risen because we, we the disciples came and stole the body. But Matthew 28 went on, said, I'm going to tell you the truth about it. Matthew 28, and now after the Sabbath, as, they, as the first day of the week began to draw, Mary Magdalene and others, Mary, came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the doors and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing was as snow and the guards shook. That was the truth. Uh, you, you see, that, that, uh, we done tapped in what was going on with them. It shook them for fear of him and became like dead men. But they were not dead enough to not take the money, but they were just dead enough to be scared at the fact that this dog on Jesus that we're trying to cover up he's really who he say he is oh I would not want to be that person on the other end of that door and I mess around and let somebody deceive me to not believe that he's the way the truth and the life oh I would not want to be that person that let somebody deceive me to make me think he is just a prophet who do you say that I am to some say I'm a liar. I don't want to be that person. I would want to be that person. Oh, if we would go to first John, John would say, Beloved, believe not every spirit. For there are many false spirits holy out there in the land, and they deceiving many. And, and, and watch this. Can I talk to somebody and tell you? Paul could defend this because he had a revelation. Uh, when you go to Acts 9, well, come, could you go to Acts 9 for me? I'm going to get out your way. Let me look at my time. I'm going to get out your way. You know, you know, it's good when the Lord is giving you something and you can just go. But I got to show you this. There's something in me that's telling me I just got to show it to you. And so look here, look here. At Acts chapter 9. Y'all remember when Paul was on his way to Damascus. Now this is one that did not even believe that Jesus rose from the dead. He was a Pharisee, meaning that he only believed that he was coming futuristic. But he hadn't came yet. And Corinthians told us that the Jews was looking for a sign and that the Greeks was looking for wisdom. That the Israelites was looking for the sign. But they did not know that he would be born in Bethlehem of Judah out of a low degree. He would come out of Egypt. He would be a living among his brethren. I'll raise up a prophet among you. Isaiah said he'll be stricken with grief. He'll come out of the root of Jesse. Our sorrow, our anguish, he will bear. And it will please God to bruise his son. And what? But he showed up. And when he showed up, watch this, the Jews didn't even believe. The Pharisees called him the devil. And Paul was on that line with these people. Woo! You know what 
God just did Elder Hilton, God just converted an unbeliever. Isn't it funny you could be in church and still be an unbeliever? They call themselves the children of God, the seed of Abraham. But yet, John the Roman said, you went about to establish your own righteousness. You didn't get this from God. And it's funny when you believe every spirit and not judge or challenge the doctrine or the teaching, you will be looking like perversion. Watch what Acts said. Acts chapter, go to verses 3 of that 9. And as he journeyed, uh -huh. he came near to Damascus. What happened? And suddenly there shined round about him huh. a light from heaven. Now watch this. And he fell to the earth, uh -huh. and he heard a voice uh -huh. saying unto him, What did he say? Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou wait, me? Wait, wait, hold up, hold up. Who? Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou and what me? what did Saul say then? And he said, uh -huh. Who art thou? What? Lord. Wait, hold up. Now, this same Jesus that you don't believe in is supposed to be still dead in the ground. This same Jesus, based on the testimony of Matthew 28 and 9, his body is supposed to be stolen by the disciples. But in Acts chapter 1, it says Jesus appeared unto them with 49 days, showing fallible proof of his resurrection right. and teaching them things concerning the kingdom. Now, Paul didn't get this part because he was the Pharisee, the Pharisee, the Hebrew of Hebrew, out of the stock of Benjamin. He was caught up in his credentials. But when he didn't get caught up in it, it's the Holy Ghost. And when the Lord, oh my God, help me, Jesus, when the Lord touched him, he said, who are thou? Lord. When God put his hands on you, your eyes open, your heart become receptive and God begin to say, it is I. If I want to tell the truth, the true revelation of salvation is the revelation of Jesus. Right. The writer said, no man can say Jesus is Lord, except of the Holy Ghost. The other, song, the other writer said, how can they come unless they are strong? It's the work and power of the Holy Ghost. The revelator. Right. The search of all things. Yay! The deep things of God. No man knows okay. the spirit of God. Except the spirit of God. For no man has seen God at any time. But it's the son of God. It's in the bosom of God that declares him. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Nor have they entered the heart of man. But God has revealed those things to us by his spirit. Paul had to get a revelation of who Jesus was. Amen. Let me say this. Now, you don't want to fool with a person that got a revelation. My, my, my. Uh, nah, 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 nah. Go to Acts 13. This ain't Paul's all. Acts 13, verses 14. Acts 13, verses 14. Watch that. Read it for me, brother. But when he departed from Perga, mm -hmm. They came to Antioch. Where did he go? And to Pisidia, uh -huh. and went unto the synagogue on the Sabbath day, uh -huh. and they sat down. Uh -huh. And at the reading of the law and of the prophet, uh -huh. the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, what? saying, mm -hmm. Ye men and brothers, what? if ye have any word of exhortation Come on. for the people, what you gonna say now? Say Paul? on. Now, Paul, before you started preaching, you was a Pharisee. What's your message now, Paul? Then Paul stood up uh -huh. and beckoned him with his hand. What did he say? He said, oh, God. you men of Israel, come on, and ye that fear God, give me the gospel. Give me audience. Uh -huh. The God of this people of Israel chose our father and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt, uh -huh. and with a high, uh -huh. with a high arm, God, he brought them out of it. He taken them from back to front. And about the time of 40 years, uh -huh. he suffered them right. in the manners of the wilderness. Come on. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Cain, he on. divided their land to them by lot. All right. And after that, uh -huh. he gave unto them judges about the space. Of 400 now this is the Pharisee preaching. 
and unto Samuel the prophet. Uh -huh. And afterwards, what? They desired a king. All right. And God gave unto them Saul. Okay. The son of King. He's in the synagogue. A man of the tribe of Benjamin. Talking to his own people. By the space of 40 years. All right. And when he had removed him, uh -huh. he raised up unto them David. Right. What happened? To be their king. Uh huh. To be their give their testimony. All right. And he said, I have found David, the son of Jesse. A man after he my own the root of Jesse. Oh, come on. Which shall fulfill all my will. Now see. Of this man's seed had God according to his promise. I raised unto Israel uh -huh. a savior. Jesus is. When John had first preached. What did he preach? Before his coming. Wait. A baptism of repentance. Woo. To all the people of Israel. Uh huh. And as John fulfilled his course, yes. he said, what? Whom think ye that I am? No. Huh? I am not he. Who are? But behold, what? there come one after me. Come on. Whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to Now we get to the message. Men and brethren. Come on. Children of the stock of Abraham. Yes, sir. And whosoever among you feared God. To you is this word of this salvation. This is thing. what we declare. For they said, uh -huh. in Jerusalem, uh -huh. and their rulers, because they knew him not. Come on. Nor yet the voices of the prophet, which are read every Sabbath day. They have fulfilled them in condemning him. Come on. And though they found no cause of death. He's him, telling them what's happening. He desired they pilot uh -huh. that he should be slain. Uh -huh. And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him. What happened? They took down from the tree. What did they do? And they laid him in a skeleton. Come on. But God raised him. Who? From the dead. Who? But God. Who? God did what? Raised him from the dead. Uh huh. And he was seen of them forty days. Oh. And they came up with him from Galilee. Come on. To Jerusalem. Now who, watch the text. Who oh. are the witnesses unto this people? Now watch this. And we declare unto you, you right now, glad tidings, how that promise which was made unto the father, now God had fulfilled it. The same. Until us is true, and that he raised up Jesus again. And so everything is hinged on this the resurrection. Had he not raised, people say, Preacher, you sure did a lot of reading because I need you to get the gospel. The gospel was what he done in the foretime of the prophets. They prophesied that he was coming. He showed up and he fulfilled all. That was written of him. He said, Lo, I must come in the volume of the book to do my Lord's will. And when he came down, he was born in Bethlehem of Judah, and then he lived in obscurity until 30. Coming out of obscurity and meeting John the Baptist, to what John the Baptist said, I'm in need for you to baptize me. But Jesus said, Suffer this to be so, so that we can fulfill all righteousness. He wouldn't talk about no baptism, about fulfilling righteousness. He was talking about the prophecies of the prophets. I come to fulfill what was spoken about my life, so when I die, I can offer up a this sacrifice that death can't hold me, grave can't hold me, sickness can't hold me, God, hell can't hold me, nothing can hold me. And so Paul said, He is risen. My 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 argument is that I was the one that was dead in my trespasses. Come in, Ephesians chapter two. When I was in my sin, Christ died, and He said He's quickened me. Watch this. But I was dead in my trespasses. I was alienated from this common household of wealth of Israel. But God, who was rich in mercy, God, who was rich in grace, God, who was rich in strength, He sent His Son. Watch what the Bible says. There is therefore no more condemnation to those who are Christ Jesus, who walk not according to the flesh. But the writer went on to say, He said this, but what the law couldn't do, Oh, the man alive. Oh, the man alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. 
your best life is your second life. Your best life is your second life. We always talk about our best life here. But the Bible said if you don't suffer with me, you can't reign with me. The Bible said if you are ashamed of me, I'm going to be ashamed of you. How you going to serve God and you going to be a set out? How you going to serve God and have evidence in your body? Have evidence in your earth? Have evidence how to feel the Holy Ghost? Have evidence in your mind to know who he is and yet you don't declare him. The Bible said that the world is full of his glory. That there's no space, there's no area in the earth that his glory is not seen. The Bible said when God or the Lord Jesus was at the baptism pool, the writer went on to say, when he went down in the water, God said, hear ye him. My beloved son, Hebrews 1 picked it back up and said, God in a hundred times spoken to the fathers by the prophet, but he speaks to us now through the son. But then Jesus said, John 14, this expedient that I go, if I don't go away, the comforter when I come, what is the comforter? It's the spirit of the promise. That's the thing that's going to resurrect your immortal body. What shall we say there? Shall we continue and say it? That grace may abide. How shall we? Know ye not as many of us were baptized unto his death. We were baptized unto his resurrection. And the same spirit that's in Christ shall quicken our mortal body. Your best life. Is your second life. Your best life is your second life. If you haven't denied yourself, took up the cross, who's ever lose their life for my sake shall find it. If you haven't lost your life yet, then this is your best life. And this is all that you have. If in this life only we have Christ. If in this life, say that with me. This life. Say that with me. This life. If in this life. You're partying in. This life. You got money in. This life. You got fame in. This life. But then Paul said, he said, I reckon that this present suffering yeah. is not compared Amen. to the glory Amen. that's revealed yeah. in Christ. That this light affliction work more a far more a exceeding glory. So why I'm home suffering is working into my eternal power from God. Don't you ever let nobody tell you what you're going through is for nothing. Or what you put up with is in vain. Or why you didn't do what you do. If the truth be told, give it back to court, it's just got a lot of feedback. If the truth be told, the reality is this. The reason why you stay true to the faith, because you believe that you got your name in the book. The reason why you don't cuss, the reason why you don't act up, because you recognize your position in Christ. You're not acting up because you're trying to prove yourself to other people. You have to use keeping your mind right, because the Bible said, having this hope purify yourself. There's something in you that has an expectation of what is to come. And so I'm not going to let you, I'm not going to let you, I'm not going to let you, I'm not going to let it, I'm not going to let her, I'm not going to let him, I'm not going to let this set in the way. But the Bible said, nothing shall separate me from the love of God. No height, no depth, no creature, no fame, no life, no pestilence, no tribulation. Nothing shall separate me. Because if God be for me, who can be against me? And so Paul, in his verse, he says, this is your argument. And this is your reputation. But then, at the end, look at, just turn this up a little volume up on this. Look at the resurrection. When you saw the disputation, Brahma, the claim, Brahma, the claim was he ain't wrong. He didn't rise from the dead. Okay. Paul said that can't be true. Because I got saved by this resurrection. I know what I was about. 
I was on my horse trauma. I was riding in the project. I was stealing, burglarizing people home. And all of a sudden, I didn't get out of boot camp, riding my horse, in and out of detention centers, riding my horse, but then sooner or later, a light shot down. Okay. While I was riding my horse, June the 7th, 1995, that light shined down. When that light shined down, it knocked me out of bondage and put my face in to the glory of God. To the point that it caused me to see the Lord. As Paul was in there, sitting on straight, blind, fasting for three days, seeking the Lord, and Ananias, who God speaks to, Go and find him. They say, Saul, Saul. God said, you his man. My, my, my. He will use. He will use you. We may not be Paul, but the light shine on all of us. And we can testify out of our own testimony what God done for us. Your salvation ain't a fluke because it comes with evidence. Amen. You know the evidence of your salvation? The Holy Ghost. Okay, I'll say it again because I know that may sound like a cuss word to men. Because when you say the Holy Ghost, you think about bucket. You think about it. It's more sophisticated than that. Those are just the signs of its presence. But the true Holy Ghost, its power mama, is the quickening. crying too long at a funeral. That Holy Ghost make you look at the casket and say, I'll see you soon. That Holy Ghost make you don't even go, want to go to the graveyard. I used to go and see Uncle Bubba every time I come in town. One day I was out there. I heard this in my ears as clear as day. I ain't saying it's God, but I heard this. Why look for the dead? Why look for the uh, uh, life among the dead? He is not here. And what you're talking to is just the shell. He is risen. To be absent from this body is to be in the presence of God. I stopped going to the real. Because I know. We don't have to sorrow like they We got a resurrection. His name is Jesus. And he is risen. And he has risen with all power over heaven. And you ain't got to wait to the east. You ain't got to have your Passover speech to reenact the resurrection. He is still on the throne. And he threw that in for free too. Thank you. You may not. But he is. Look at somebody and say, he is. Risen. He is. I will resurrect the Savior. And I will rise. Your best life. Is your second life. Amen. Because that's the risen life. Amen. Your best life. Is your second life. Because that's the risen life. No more crying. No more tears. I saw a new heaven. I saw. It's waiting on us y'all. We think we got to do this at a funeral. The devil is a lie. Paul gave us this so we can look through. The power of resurrection. While we live in the trials of the world. That the hope of God holds me still and not make me act carnal because I can't get what I want. Paul said it best. This is the confidence that I have. He that begun a good work in me shall perform to the day of his coming. Stand with me with your hands. Dear God, mighty Savior. 
resurrected power. Yes. Yes. The glory of God. Yes. The presence of God. Yes. God incarnate. Jesus. Yeshua. Our Savior. Our deliverer. Matthew said, we shall call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people yes. from their sin. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but through the Son. And the Word was made flesh. And we beheld as only the begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And he has appointed Jesus Christ, the heirs of all things, that he may be the first fruit of the brother. And of the dead. It is Jesus. Dear God, we receive this Jesus. We live in this Jesus. It's the Holy Ghost that Jesus said will be in us. John said, I come baptize with water, but there's one greater than I that will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? And Paul laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Some prophesied, some spoke with other tongues, but the kingdom of God was glorified. We believe in Jesus, Almighty God. And so, Lord, we ask for the resurrected glory of God to rejuvenate us in hope, to give us the energy, to give us more comfort and more support that when we're weak, when we're in these times of turbulence and trouble, we can look through this trouble and see eternal life. We can look through this depression and see eternal life. We can look through disappointments and see eternal life. Help us. And help us to war against the devil who tries to war against our minds. Trying to tell us he ain't raised. He hasn't risen. God doesn't hear you. Saying the blood of Jesus is against you. And every word you speak is a lie. And the Lord rebukes you in the name of Jesus. And we decree God's power. We decree God's word. We decree God's promises. We decree God's deliverances. There's no curse among us. For we are the seed of Abraham. Heirs and joint heirs. And we are risen in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now bless us now. Those that are not saved, save them. Yes. Those that need strength to be recovered, recover yes. them. All in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Through the resurrection of your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes. And the church say, amen. 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 amen, amen, amen. Somebody give God a praise. Amen. There may be somebody that's here praising God. You may be in this media from Facebook to, to Instagram to in the media stream recording, yeah. Yeah. you may be viewing New Progressive Church of God by Faith with the pastor, Elder James Stevenson, yeah. is the pastor. And you may have tuned in and you may say, Preacher, I need to be saved. Somebody in the congregation out here may say, I need to be saved. Yeah. This is your opportunity while you're in radio land or on the stream live yeah. to be right in your living room and offer yeah. your life to Jesus. I gave you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And for some of you that are here, you have received the gospel. I say to you, if you want to be saved, come and God will save you. Yes, if is. you're not saved, I'm asking you to come and God will save you. For those that are on this Facebook Live, if you're not saved and you want to be saved, we want to give you the word of God. The Bible said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. John said, if you repent, and be baptized. Be baptized in Jesus. Thou shall be saved. You repent and ask God to forgive you of your sins. Turn from your sins and fall on your face right now and cry out to God for him to come into your life. And ask God to fill you with the Holy Ghost right now in your living room. Say, Lord, forgive me. I have sinned against you. The gospel is that Jesus died for my sins. I repent right now for all the sins I have committed. I humble myself and I ask you to search my heart. Cleanse me. Wash me. Fill me with your Holy Ghost that I may be new in you. God, I for I denounce sin. I denounce sin. I denounce the kingdom of darkness and I want to live for you now. I confess you are my Lord. You are my Savior and I am your child. Fill me with your Holy Ghost. Seal me into the day of redemption. In the name of Jesus, we pray on your life. In the name of Jesus, in your home, in your house, wherever you are, we pray. God, fill them with the Holy Ghost. Seal them into the day of redemption. Give them the glory.
glories of heaven that will signify that they are your child. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name, we say, brother, we say, sister, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody give God a praise. Somebody get that table on this line. Somebody in here could have been saved right now. Sit at your seat. Glory to God, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Heaven rejoice. Somebody receive Christ. God, we thank you. As we prepare ourselves to receive our pastor, Pastor Elder James Stevenson, come on, let's give God a praise. Let's prepare to receive our leader. Praise the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. What a word for us today. Amen. Y'all, every one of us that is filled with the Holy Ghost, we can witness, amen, your second life is your best life. Amen. I was meditating while he was preaching. Amen. My second life condemned my first life. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. In the second life, no fornication, no committing adultery. Amen. No starving folks in your back. Oh my God. Oh my. In my second life, it bring the best out of me. Please God. Amen. Ain't that all right? Amen. I'm glad for the second life. Glory to God. Amen. And y'all, you know what it was in that first life. Thank God Almighty. Amen. <laughs> Committing adultery. Amen. Husband ain't treating wife right. Wife ain't treating the husband right. The children ain't treating their parents right. Amen. Glory to God Almighty. Amen. Committing crimes. Amen. Thank God. And say you ain't never done it. But the new life. Paul said, the life that I now live in the flesh, I ain't, I, I, I'm not living it for myself, but by the face of the Son of God. Y'all, it's going to take Jesus to help you to maintain your second life. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. Isn't that wonderful? Yo, I'm glad the Lord is, amen, in the midst of us. And listen what the Lord said in the new life. The Holy Ghost will bring back to you. Amen. Everything that God intends for you to do and know, the Holy Ghost can bring it to you. There is an inward reminder to every saved brother or sister. Sisters and brothers, amen. Thank God for the new life. Let us continue to live right. And righteousness is going to be our reward. Is that all right? Amen. A good word today. Thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, all you got to do is go home and meditate. Amen. Uh, you see a lot of difference between them two lives. Glory to God. Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. In that first life, amen, you you make up your mind, you know, uh, you know, how you want to commit a sin. But in the new life, you look at how much right could I do? How many people could I love? Is that all right? Thank God Almighty. Amen. The second life is the best life. Now y'all, amen, we, we got deacon there. Deep, come and let's get our offering. Amen, y'all, I was gone. Amen, I think I run a couple of weeks behind on my tithes and offering. Y'all, that's what I like about the new life. Nobody don't have to beg you. The Holy Ghost will tell you what you need to do. 
Ain't that all right? In the new life, you're going to be right with God. With that little money God gives you, you're going to be right with that. Hello, somebody. Amen. Sometimes when you got to remind people so much about that, that I'm wondering, did you get the message? Glory to God. Amen. So, uh, two weeks offering is in this envelope. So I'm, I'm caught up today. Is <laughs> that all right? Thank God. Amen. And I want you, amen, y'all, amen, if you in the new life, Give God what belongs to him. The Lord to give and it shall be. Giving you good baby pressed down, shaking together, running over. Millions of give into your bosom. Isn't it wonderful? Amen. I got ready to come back home. Yo, I had enough money to bring me home. <laughs> But one of the most sweet daughters of mine, she said, Dad, when you get ready to go back home, I'm going to, I'm going to give you some money to get you home. And that girl got on cash app and she sent me $250. All right, all right. Go with your God. I ain't spent but $52 for gas. Amen. I think I spent about thirty dollars, you know, for food. I stopped up in Lake City with that old country cafe. Had all kind of good food. Amen. And yo, me and my wife, we stopped there and let her eat till she want no more. Pray be the Lord. And I brought that girl on the Avon Park. Amen. And here I am here today. I'm glad. Yeah. I know it was God mercy. Yeah. Thank God today. Amen. So D, come on. Amen. Let's get this offering. Amen. Out of the way. Amen. Thank God. All your tithes. You know what you owe God. I ain't got to tell you. Amen. 